Warning, the following communications are not authorized. Please disable your signals and report to your local re-education center immediately. Failure to comply will result in immediate reprimand and capital punishment. We're all told, trust the science, oh, doctors, data, scientists. We all know that this is a charade of, of just a big play, a big, you know, political theater, but they just keep pretending. Uh, somewhere I have a sticker from a bottle of uh, brain force. Oh, <laughs> say what you will about their products. What I used Rainforce for the one time that I bought it was... Yeah, V2 or the sequel or a million more MAGA, I don't know. Um, I am getting a little bit of trolls on my Instagram now. They're like, oh, that's not a million people in the... Dude. <laughs> if it's, you know, it's cold as shit out here. <laughs> All right. I guess I don't got to time up the camera anywhere. This is nice. I will find a way to put the camera into the computer. But anyways, three, two, episode four. Episode four. We're back. Back in full effect. How are you, young man? I'm amazing. Long weekend. Or I shouldn't say long. Eventful weekend. Oh, so it wasn't a holiday there. No, no, no. Not a long weekend. That is coming up uh, next week. But uh, just just a quick trip to D.C. I mean, I'm happy to talk about it, but what do you got going? Yeah, tell us about that. I wanted to talk about uh, the stupid uh, health officials here. <laughs> tell your story right off the jump here. You went to the Million Mega March? Yeah, V2 or the sequel or million more MAGA, I don't know. Um, I am getting a little bit of trolls on my Instagram now. They're like, oh, that's not a million people. And I'm like, dude, it, it's kind of, I, everybody likes a little alliteration, right? It's not yes. so much about the actual head count, but just say kind of rolls it off the tongue a little bit better. Um, and it was absolutely epic. Now, as I'm sure you know, the sequel is never really as good as the the original except for maybe next friday and i know a lot of people wouldn't agree with that but that's not what this is about um, i was gonna go with batman begins and dark knight <laughs> okay Both all right great. that's fair see so sometimes it can be but um n not taking anything away from it it was still a huge amount of people i i'd be silly to even give a guess but i will say it wasn't nearly as big as the first one maybe three quarters of the people, but um, still, uh, it's good to see that people aren't yet giving up the faith and uh, capitulating to the communist left-wing party at this particular point. So um, a lot of familiar faces. Um, the weather was actually not too bad. And, you know, we're just not giving up. I'm certainly not giving up. Not just yet. It's not going to happen. Glad to see you've got a background here. What, what kind of crap you got on here? Oh, yeah. So, so I finally paraphernalia of New York subway, if it looks like. Exactly. Some political paraphernalia, some uh, face covering propaganda. And I actually still have more. So I might rotate a little bit, but um, forgot your mask. Just ask. Reopen New York now. Uh, if you'll notice, I went to a reopen New York rally in May. Not even, might have been April. I mean, these things have been going on for so long. It's just absurd how they're still dragging this on. Um, keep your distance. All this propaganda. And a little bit from uh, <laughs> our buddy, our buddy Uncle Steve at the War Room. And, uh, and of course, uh, the wonderful Fog City Midge. Nice, nice. And so the, tell and some South Dakota. Some South Dakota stuff, some InfoWars stuff. InfoWars, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somewhere I have a sticker from a bottle of uh, Brain Force. Oh, <laughs> say what you will about their products. What I used Brain Force for the one time that I bought it was um, I wanted to see if it would help stave off a caffeine headache, and it did for, like I would say, like four hours. And then the headache comes back. But I tr like, I'm the type of guy that if I drink coffee six days out of – the week, the seventh day, I'm getting, I'm, my head might start to hurt, and my body is just like, what are you, what are you doing here? And then the next day, I'll have a blistering headache, can't accomplish anything. 
I don't know why my body's sensitive like that. So on that second day, I tried brain force because it says it's got all this crap in it. <laughs> and it staved it off for like four hours. It's better than taking aspirin, I would assume. I, I mean, is it expensive? Just out of curiosity? How much? I think it was like 30 bucks Canadian. So that's like 10 cents American. And I'm constantly <laughs> getting e promo emails from Alex Jones. Directly from him, I'm sure. But, uh, <laughs> but I constantly on sale. I don't know. By the way, like just just saw him marching oh, by nice. some people. Yeah, um, it it was it was epic, dude. And like I said, we're just we're not giving up. So maybe I'll try the brain force. I don't know. Shout out Alex Jones. You know why not? Right. <laughs> I'm not saying do it. I'm saying it did something. But um, did you stick around for any of the violence? Okay, so that I actually. Dude, I just, I couldn't do it. Um, if I'm honest with you, um, I was, we were very low key. I was uh, talking to Maggie and we were doing the censorship thing. And I was actually, damn, you know, shout out, uh, shout out Ponce's point. Um, I was supposed to link up with him and a couple other folks. And I just, we just got sidetracked, man. We were like eating pizza and, and talking about censorship well into the night. So I didn't, I didn't do the, the, well, I guess the chaos coverage, right? Um, but I did it last time. And, you know, you can see it anywhere, right? Everybody's got a little bit of footage from a brawl or a stabbing or the cops pushing back mm -hmm. on bikes. And I just tried to take a little, a little bit different, uh, a little bit different approach this time. And, and uh, I did miss the chaos. So it is what it That's is. I'm good. sure there will be more. I'm sure there will be more. Non, not getting stabbed is generally an accomplishment these days around Antifa. And, and last time, last time uh, at the November one, I was actually eating at a at a restaurant, uh, not not Harry's, which I'm sure is very famous uh, by this point, um, but right around the corner from Harry's when we could just start seeing people sprinting across the window and it was almost like like a scooby-doo cartoon or something like they would sprint one way and then run the other way and some of my friends are like no they're like freaking out i'm literally just eating a chicken sandwich inside the restaurant like no we're gonna get cornered like they're gonna come in here and there's no other way out and i'm like dude i don't think antifa is gonna come into the chicken spot like i i just I, and they and they didn't but i later went out and started covering it and and i think one of the weirdest things I saw was like some proud boys actually getting like ransacking a BLM or an Antifa. I just call them BLM Tifa at this point. I can't really keep it straight, but uh, ransacking one of their backpacks, I believe. And don't quote me on this. I don't know exactly what was going down, but at one point uh, I just saw a cell phone get chucked completely down the block. And then I went to go Ooh. retrieve the cell phone and it actually started ringing in my hand. So, I said all that to say I steered clear of the chaos coverage this time around. That reminds me in high school, a girl broke my cell phone. Took me like, took like two months for her to pay me back. Jen from high school. <laughs> she tried, she tried to slide it across the pavement to me. She, I, I think she saw us doing that as a joke on regular floors, not outside. But uh, this is back. This is back in flip phones, flip phones. So that's good that you didn't get stabbed. <laughs> But how do you see – basically what I want to ask is, does did this accomplish anything, or is it just a show of force, let's say? Um, I think it's just a show of force, right? If I had to choose between those – now, I don't know. You know, obviously the governmental red tape moves very slow. So it may accomplish something that I'm just not privy to just yet. But I really do think it is just a show of force, right? Um for years now, and obviously it's been amplified in this past year with fentanyl Floyd, um, it's, just <laughs> a show of force. it's just a show of force that, that we're not going anywhere, right? So while you don't have every uh, – <laughs> shout out Rush. I was listening to Rush Limbaugh in the car today, but uh, he was giving all the callers a little bit of grief because he was saying, I need you to say 74 million plus. Like that's what he was making them say. And obviously – we didn't have all 74 million plus Trump voters out there, but it is proof that this is not going away in a very similar fashion as the, the BLM Tifa people that have been burning down our country. 
for easily the past year, and we can trace it back to, you know, I like to trace it all the way back to Occupy Wall Street, but now, now that's a little bit esoteric, I guess, at this point, is that we're not going anywhere. I'm certainly not going anywhere. Like, I mean, I, I did a little clip uh, just yesterday about the Associated Press talking about how the Proud Boys ripped down a BLM sign and they want to charge them for a hate crime that's like, uh, wh- where insane. have you guys been? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, where have you been for the last eight months when everything's getting burned out? So the point I'm trying to make is it is at least a show of force. Perhaps it accomplished something and maybe time will tell. I don't know yet. Now you did a video with Fog City Midge as well. And uh, it was crazy that when she, cause she posted a thing about her reels and how one of them's got like 260,000 views. And then the next one she posted had like eight. And so yeah. I went and looked at it and I was like, yeah, you know what? I don't see her stuff anymore at all. I mean, I can't, I can't act like I'm the most engaged person with anyone's profile on Instagram because I mainly just watch stories and post my own stuff. But yeah, someone whose account is that big and you just never see them their stuff. And then I went back later in the day to double check, and the thing only still had like 32. So it couldn't have been just like yeah. it, it was just posted or it slipped through the cracks for a first half an hour. But we go through, I go through the same thing I did with my YouTube channel. I'm over it now. But for Rebel News, 1.4 million subscribers. And like, I don't even want to say it, it sounds silly, but like the amount of views that we should be getting per video, usually it's like, it's like 10%. We should be getting like quarter of a million views a video. Cause obviously not everyone who subscribed is yeah. going to watch every time, but you should be getting around like 10%. That's what it was for me back in the the non-censored monetized days. And if you had a good video, you knew it was good, it's going to exceed your your uh, yeah. subscriber count. You usually shoot for views that match your subscriber count. That was back in the day. But for a count, what she got, 200, 300,000 now? I don't yeah, even remember, think, but it's one of those. I think, uh, I don't know, she's probably doing like, 225 or something, 230, 235. To get posts. less than 100 views on something, there's no possible way because it, it, it's just taken off the feed. Because if you've got a quarter of a million people looking for something, let's even go as low as 200,000 people, the odds that nobody is going to scroll past it and see it and stop and look, obviously they follow it for a reason. You would have to assume you get at least 25,000 views from that. Or like your followers, how come you're not seeing what you're following? It doesn't make any sense. No, and it's happening to me, obviously, on a much smaller scale. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's so obvious that they just don't want you. I was getting actually more views on my Instagram stories when I had less followers. So exactly, I right? 2,000 followers, I was getting almost 50% story views. And then, you know, I could hover around 5,000 followers and get, you know, six or 700 views on a story right as it's about to go away. And it's just, it's very peculiar. And I do, I try to, I mean, I'm sure if you're, you know, watching them or whatever, like I try to, it's not all political, right? Like architecture, Kanye stuff, sneakers, whatever, just things that I genuinely enjoy, right? Just to sort of break it up so I'm not boxed into this, like, well, he's just a Trump supporter with a red hat. You know what I mean? And I don't know if it's working, but I'm certainly not one to just throw in the towel. Like I'm almost just going to go harder. You know, like I'm at the point where, you know, at at first I was just winging it, whatever. I would find stuff and things would come to mind and I would just post. But now I'm at the point where I'm like kind of planning stuff out. I want to like think about it a little bit more, post a little bit more. You know what I mean? Just like, so there's always something up there just to see if it's going to get, you know, the views that, because how, how, when I had half the amount of followers, how was I getting double the amount of views? It's just very bizarre. And I don't, I don't, I don't have a reason why, but I guess that was the point of the video that I made with her. And even if you look at my older video with my friend, George, who has, dude, 200 followers, he's a regular dude from the Bronx, like just a regular dude who, you know, like just has some political thoughts and they wipe his out, his account out completely. 
We're not even talking a shadow ban. We're saying your account is gone because I think one of his former friends had reported him because they didn't like a meme that he posted about. Uh, he, he like put he put Trump's face on on Rushmore or something, and, and it was just too much for the left to handle. So it's a bizarre. I've definitely, no, I've definitely noticed your stuff not coming up anymore. Um, sometimes back in the day when you would post like multiple things per, per day, I would see those in a row and obviously we've interacted a lot, but now your stuff doesn't show up anymore. Um, and the way, the, what I thought it was on YouTube was around 30,000 subscribers, but what it really is, is once they put a tag on your profile, I don't know if it's a, if they have a stop growth tag, cause I've seen people who are at 14,000 subscribers just completely stop. Once I got to 49,000, they completely, I was no longer allowed to grow from there it was month over month that I'd lose a few hundred per month. That's the last two years. And now I'm down to 45,000. And what it is for YouTube is the, uh, is a political tag. It's got to be something similar for Instagram that once they find you and they say, Oh, this is political. Um, we're going to tag it. And there's got to be like some sort of secret code that means, people we don't like because um I you could start a progressive point. page and it would probably explode if you're on a different like ip probably and i think not to go like super tinfoil hat or anything but yes of course these are separate companies but i i seriously liken them to like the five families right like they're all in cahoots together right so yes Facebook owns Instagram and Google owns YouTube and we all know that stuff, but they are clearly, I mean, Dorsey and Zuckerberg, like they're clearly have a very that is, similar. Sounds interest. very robotic. Exactly. So it, it's, it's an entire mess. And I think it's pretty obvious how social media along with the regular mainstream media. I mean, if those, if those were honest players, we seriously wouldn't be in this mess in my humble opinion, right? Like if people, even even down to AG Bar, you know, like, dude, you were suppressing stuff that you knew could have an effect on this. And we all know about whatever. Well, 10% of people, don't quote me, I don't know the exact number, but 10% of people wouldn't have voted for, um, you know, Bo Jiden if they heard about the, the laptop, if they heard about, yeah. you know what I mean? So they're, they're obviously um, Democrat players. And um, it's just, it's all for what's happening right now. But, but I think... I think we can climb out of it. And I know that might sound crazy, but I, I do think it's possible. At least in my head, I'm not willing to throw in the towel just yet. Well, it, it's hard to build up a fan base. It's hard when they stop you, but I feel like once you get going, uh, you can get a lot of participation just by the dedication of a fan base. I look at people like Fleckus or Will Witt, who have like quarter million uh, followers on Instagram, maybe more, and they do get a lot of engagement. And even if it's only 50,000, that's very monetizable if, when they're dedicated fans. I mean, you sell 1,000 T-shirts for 20 bucks each, yeah. you're probably getting 10 grand off, like a lot of money off of that. What's 20,000 times, or 20 times, whatever uh, I was saying. I was doing math. The billionaires and the <laughs> trillionaires. <laughs> the trillionaires. <laughs> But what I'm saying is you can't break it once you get to a certain point. But it seems in, like, Midge's case, you get completely shut out. Now, luckily, um, Parler is starting to blow up. I see, like, there's big profiles there. And uh, this Rumble seems to be blowing up, too. Now, I don't know if yeah, that's because they put certain people on the front page. Because Dinesh D'Souza has a lot of... On Rumble? Really? No, no, no. I, I didn't... I just didn't know too much about Rumble. You're saying Dinesh D'Souza is like pretty big on there. I, I I have to look into it. I'm I'm not up on that just yet. I think they have a uh, like a partnership. Well, first of all, they have monetization, which is huge because they I think they they share the advertising. I don't know if you want to call it a model, but monetization program with YouTube, so it is monetized, but. I would assume that the reach is not censored. And I believe it's owned by Dan Bongino as well, who's going to be a billionaire, frankly, from owning this and parlor. But Dinesh D'Souza, I think is like a recommended person on the top of their page, their homepage. So he's up at like half a million subscribers, I think on there, which is quite a bit. And he's over a million on parlor. I guess maybe he's friends with them probably, 
but it seems to be a good, the new alternative. And if it gets a good spike like Parler did at one point, then it probably could be like the next big thing. Because BitChute has been BitChute. I saw they posted something the other day that said they had like, I think it was 70 million unique. I'm going to look this up. They had a a new record for unique views, and it wasn't that all impressive when you think about that it spread across all of their users. I didn't, so, so, I, so am, am I mistaken that BitChute doesn't even have an app? Is that correct? I don't know. It's 41.7 million visits in November, and they don't say unique views. So if you go across 47 million views across 41 million views across all the users, I mean, that doesn't seem like that much. So well, it's an knows? uphill battle for sure. It's definitely an uphill battle. Um, was I going to say? So I guess uh, did we did? Let's talk about this little clip here, though, right? So we, we talked about the MAGA march and the censorship, but this little clip of uh, who who was that, by the way? Those are the number one and two d doctors for the province of Ontario. So a bit more than ten million people. Uh, they're in charge of. They're the one and two top dogs. They're the ones that wow. go in the press conferences every day. And, and are they so I guess. Like, oh how yeah. How is this possible? At least a hundred thousand people. Like so many people. Like on Instagram, they've got the repost thing, uh, where whatever program people use, and it tags you. I've never been tagged in so many things because like twenty five people have reposted this. So the Rebel News one this morning had sixty six thousand views it's been the the biggest view on our instagram account of all time so far not very it the instagram account's like a year old so that's why um but so i imagine it's at like seventy five thousand now plus a lot of the pages that reposted it some are thirty thousand most of them around 10 and 10 or 12 but some are like 30 and fifty thousand. so you have all their views and on twitter it's it's uh, like 35,000 views, and that's not counting other people who I've seen also post it. So probably a couple million people have seen it by this point. And if you haven't seen it, we'll put it over top of this um, in a clip, or we'll just play it. It's the two top doctors of Ontario saying, you know, I don't know why I bring these uh, these papers with me. I never read them anyways. And the other guy's like, yeah, me neither. Not unless you give me the numbers. And she's like, they, I just say whatever they tell me. Now, granted, they probably were, they're joking, obviously, they're laughing. But are they serious or not? I don't know if, like, is that really a joke? I never read off these sheets. I would say something like that. Like, a joke we have for one of our live streams, uh, a couple of people who do the live streams, when Sheila and David do it, they're like, we never get through any of the topics. I don't know why we have this list of topics. <laughs> so, like, you could joke about that, but it's true. So I don't think it's far-fetched for them to be like, we have this sheet of information, we just never talk about it because we'll just say whatever they tell us to say. I don't think you would joke. Like, I don't think you would lie about that. But joking or not, I mean, is this really a time to be, like, right? I mean, you, exactly. we, we all, we're all told, trust the science, oh, doctors, data, scientists. And then you can't, you're not, you know, uh, obviously, Trump is pretty funny. He's not a comedian. That's not not his job. But now is not really the time to be joking. But you know, far be it for me to. I, I'm not a doctor, so I better just put my mask back on. Shut up, right? It's it, it's absolutely infuriating, and it reminds me of that clip that was going big viral a week or so ago of that Department of Justice official who thinks the camera can't see him, so he's fumbling around putting his mask on going out onto the stage and then immediately taking it off. I'm sure, I'm sure most people have seen it by now, but it's very similar. It's like, we all know that this is a charade of, of just a big play, a big, you know, political theater, but they just keep pretending. I mean, it's, and it's the repetitive nature, right? Like since the beginning of this, we've all just heard every day, every, every article, every news station is just COVID, 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 COVID. They beat you senseless. And then they switch to mask, 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 mask. And then they switch to uh, vaccine, 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 vaccine. And then sprinkled in there, it's like president-elect. Joe Biden's president-elect, 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 president-elect. And I feel like every, they just, the repetitive nature of this is so offensive to me. 
is that if it were real, even when you go to the airport, I mean, the screens everywhere, the loudspeaker everywhere, it's pure propaganda. If it were really that serious, would you have to beat people senseless or could you say it once or twice? Yeah. Well, I think I'm hoping that once it becomes clear that getting a vaccine won't make it so you don't have to, you still have to wear your mask, you still have to social distance, and we can't stop any of this until every single person's got it. I'll be, I'm going to go ahead and say at least 30% of people don't want to get it. So I, I'm hoping that the next thing isn't like, oh, we can't, we got to pressure everyone to get it or else we can't get back to normal, you guys. I feel like that's the next play is start pinning, because people are already pinned against each other. What's the difference of just being like, tell them they have to get the vaccine now. If you don't get the vaccine, you're an idiot. But I have trouble believing that their numbers of people who want to get vaccines are as high as they say. I mean, they'll sample like a thousand people in a survey and say like 75% of the people say they want to get the vaccine. Bullshit that many people want to get the vaccine. <laughs> and now they're telling you that, uh, you know, Fauci's out there talking, you know, playing identity politics with the vaccine, right? Like, well, a lot of people don't know that a black woman developed it. Like, what? So? <laughs> <laughs> like, or, like that's, that's a real head scratcher because for the last year, we've told, follow the science, follow the science. And now it's, well, also identity politics. Like, which vaccine is he talking about, though? There's like 10. <laughs> Uh, I don't know the Moderna or the I don't I, I mean I'm not not coming close to it so it doesn't even matter to me I don't care if if you know who the, which black woman or or black man or, or, or I, I don't I don't care I could not care less about it I'm fine they've been trying to convince me from nearly the past year that I'm sick and I'm not I, it's just it's so so it's not gonna happen like you know try me like I, I'm I'm I would rather, and I'm not to be like hyperbolic, but I would rather just die fighting. Like, I'm not doing that. It's just, yeah. it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm sorry. Once we get to so, forced territory, once we get to the place where things are being forced, where freedoms are being taken away, then you've gone too far for me. I don't care if you want to wear a mask. I don't care if you want to get a vaccine for something that's less likely to kill you than pretty much everything out there, which makes no sense to me in the beginning. <laughs> But if you want to do it, then fine. Don't come complaining to me if you get, like, balls palsy or paralysis or something. Yeah. But once it's, oh, you can't – you think you're going to get a restaurant, go into a restaurant? You think you're going to go to a concert without your vac proof of vaccine, your IBM app that connects to your health records? Oh, but nobody's going to have your health records, you guys. That's It doesn't make any sense, and it's too far. And, and you're right. At some point, you have to think about, like, how much are you willing to fight for this? and Sad to say that I'm sure a lot of people are, are thinking about that now. If the person, if they start coming to your door and say, uh, you got your vaccine pass, bruv. Uh, you got your vaccine license on yet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's probably when people start uh, getting violent. I would have to guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll take it there. Like I'm not, I'm not doing it. So you could, you know, you could, Make a note of that. It's not going to happen. And it's crazy what's going on in New York. They're like, they got these council members or whatever, Cuomo and these people. Oh, well, you know, we just, everybody needs to get the vaccine. They're, they're trying to make it mandatory. And my question is, honestly, this is not rhetorical. Why? What is there? Is it just profit? Is it just money? How much I money think it has to be. Like, like, why are you telling people this? You, you didn't. For as long as I've been alive, you didn't force people to get a flu vaccine. Maybe, I guess, to go to public school. I didn't go to public school. I went to private school. It was a little bit different. But, like, what? Why? Why are you guys so adamant about this? Why is Cuomo trotting out a black nurse and a black patient and telling, and, and this, uh, I think her name's Linda Rosenthal, I believe, some sort of uh, council member or New York Senate woman. I, I don't know her exact title, but she's writing up this bill to make it mandatory. And I'm just like, why? They think they're doing – well, on one hand, there is the money. The, whichever vaccine gets a contract for mandatory, what, 30 million people in New York, that's a bajillion dollars, I believe, exactly. But the <laughs> we're doing the right thing in the eyes of the public. It's gotten to that point, sadly, where people think that they know – and we all know who they are. People think that they know better 
than everybody else. So like, of course there's, stu- and, and you've, I've seen it my whole life where it was kind of always a joke where you just be like, yeah, we should force those people to do that. They're idiots, blah, blah, blah. But then when you get to a point where you're actually talking about 200 million people, let's say, or 150 million people that disagree with you, and you're just like, yeah, those people are stupid. We should force them to get it because they disagree with me, essentially. You're into crazy Tyrantville, and and now you're you're the person who who's calling everybody else. It's like a TV. You're calling everybody else a fascist without somehow without – realizing you're the fascist, but in your mind, it's all justified because you're doing the right thing. It's very bizarre. And obviously the media has a huge uh, part in this. I mean, all at once, every, I mean, you could just Google, you could just Google the words safe and effective and you would see. Yeah, I saw that on yours. It's like, bro, what is happening? Like nobody, like no, no dissenting opinion. Like, all, it's it's very again reminiscent of when after uh, our 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 good buddy Floyd went down at, like at the drop of a hat every media outlet was saying defund the police where do these talking points come from is it is it Hillary Clinton in a dungeon somewhere or like wh- where how do they all get the same memo that this is what we're talking about today I'm just genuinely curious who who is really pulling the strings are we talking about Soros or Rothschilds or Bill Gates like. How does that happen to where dozens of outlets are saying the same exact thing on the same day? Well, a lot of the, I think that a lot of the writers are lazy as shit and like not really that talented. So when they see something that they agree with, I mean, it's a normal thing to pretty much copy somebody's article in, in online writing and credit them for it. That's not a, an unnatural thing that happens all the time. Mm-hmm. But there's no differing opinions or no variety of thoughts in like hard hardcore leftism so they probably see no problem with it i think the some directives do come i mean i know political um political groups send out like what they send out talking points essentially to their their elect um their officials and i'm sure somebody sends that to some person like we saw in like the podesta leaks in 2016 where they're sending stuff to the people at cnn for what they want on there and that was like a list of like 30 something people that own Schroyer called like, so I forget what he called it. He was called it some sort of list of the people you can't trust. And he's right. But you've got, that's only 30 people out of the country, but these people are often very lazy and like the type of people you see on a street or video where they think that if they've got that one sentence uh, of information, which is above the regular person, but they don't know the rest of the story. Well, they're informed and let, let me tell you, buddy, about about this topic that I have never really read about, but I <laughs> saw a sentence on it, and that that's like the it was like the uh, thoughts and prayers thing. Thoughts and yep. prayers started as a thing, and then people started to hate it, so it became the cool thing to say thoughts and prayers don't help anybody. So like you get to that one level, and then everybody wants to say the same thing to feel included, which is the exact hilarious point of the joke that Anthony Jeselnik made. I'm reminded of that because I went back and watched some of my videos, the other, my old videos the other day, and that was something I left in there. Anthony Jeselnik. Oh, I forgot about him. <laughs> His stand-up is okay. His Netflix stand-up, it's probably like a seven. It's just all, like, one-liners. This is the point of the joke, but actually, the punchline is the opposite yeah. of what you thought the joke was. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm like, I'm not super familiar with him, but like the little little clips I have seen have been pretty funny. But oh, that was also years ago. I mean, I think I was probably like fresh out of college when I when I saw that stuff. But uh, I'm just, I'm actually as- astonished at how this this media is. I, I shouldn't be though. I mean, it's been happening for years. But to me, I'm so far removed that when I see stuff like that, I obviously go the complete opposite direction. Yeah. Apparently, it works. It works for some other people that are like, that are, oh, like, I got, like, zombie, you know, they got the little NPC face and, like, the 404 uh, error message on top of their head, and now they're, now they're doing it again. They're obviously going out and making sure that everybody knows that Biden won the election again, even though I am not 100% on board with that yet. I realize that the window is closing, and, you know, these electors or whatever, uh, but it's just so obvious that no, even the left doesn't like this guy. 
I mean, who who really is it? And we we've already been through that, so we don't have to rehash that. But I just I just have a real disdain for the media at this point. I guess that's it. Well, well, some people don't realize that it's an activist like mindset for a lot of these writers. So like, it couldn't possibly all be on the same side. There's so honest people in there. Maybe 10, 15 years ago, but who do you think went out and got these jobs? They started seeing that social justice stuff was working online for a bit, and they hired up all these people that churn out this garbage. And they set them up like that they're too big. They get too big to fail, essentially. Places like Vox are getting pumped like hundreds of millions of dollars into it. The Young Turks, dozens of millions of dollars. And even though they might have to lay off some people, Vice, they're still an entity that they need to be around. Like before Trump rolling stone and uh, time magazine weren't seen as like political, <laughs> even the New Yorker probably weren't seen as political outlets. But once stuff started not going the way that Democrats wanted some switch, some light switches, every single light switch on the wall had to go to biased just to, you know, keep the wheels turning. SNL had to do it. Um, even though they're always sort of were all the late night talk show had to do it. It was just like, we need to fire all systems go because we can't allow, we can't lose power. And that's what it comes down to. And the people that are writers, I mean, they don't have any real power. They want power. They don't have any real power, but they think that, but by any means necessary, if we can influence this stuff, then they're going to do it. Shout out to the person on my Instagram who said that I'm, I'm a sellout. I'm a paid for shill because I didn't believe <laughs> that there was Chinese troops in British Columbia. <laughs> it's a sweet story. Really it tur- Instagram trolls, huh? I don't even think it's an Instagram troll. I think it's an old lady who's upset that I don't believe her shitty conspiracies. Cause it did come out. I don't know if you've heard about that, that um, the government wanted to train Chinese troops um, in winter survival training, which it, which would probably be an excuse for them to come over and um, steal some information. But the military was like, oh, our allies don't really like this. We shouldn't do this. And then the government said, wait a minute, we can't cancel this. That's going to upset China. They have two of our hostages. We can't upset them. And isn't it, is it just Trump that doesn't like it? Because if it's just Trump, then we should probably keep doing it. So they didn't end up. They didn't end up doing the exercises, but they did have Chinese officers come in and observe stuff. They had them in classes as well in Toronto. They had them go observe stuff in Petawawa, which is a base in northern Ontario. The base was I was stationed at. Two guys that were in charge of me when I was in the military were in a picture giving or receiving a medal from a Chinese officer. I was truly disgusted. So the point was that people had this conspiracy. Uh, based on a 20-second video of, a, of 20 Asian women running in army fatigues in British Columbia, they thought those were Chinese troops. First of all, it wasn't Chinese camo. Just because you see Asian women doesn't mean they're Chinese, first of all. But it turned out they were part of some like weird culty retreat thing. You know, the sort of thing that somebody would go to where it's like, you're going to relax and you're going to have exercise and you're com- going to come out a whole new person. Turns yeah, out somebody yeah. part, who was part of that retreat ended up murdering somebody or something, allegedly. So it's like a weird culty retreat thing. Not the Chinese military. And then there was these conspiracies that China had uh, armies in the Arctic that were guarding gold mines because there's some phantom document out there that says Canada agreed that China has the right to defend anything that it owns with its military force in Canada, which makes no sense because nobody would ever allow that. I mean, I could be wrong, but there's no evidence of any of this. So when this actual news story broke um, from a, what in America would be called a Freedom of Information Act request, a FOIA request, same mm-hmm. thing here with different acronyms. When that thing broke, I just knew that people were going to start messaging and emailing me being like, oh, we fucking told you, Andrew, you fucking lied to us. There were Chinese <laughs> troops here all along. And I was like, oh, my God. And surprisingly, few people did that. Um, I guess there's more stuff to worry about because this is true. But there are still a few people. Um, one person messaged me and was like, so do you still not believe it? And I'm just like, yeah, I don't believe the things that don't have evidence. And then this old woman commenting, saying I'm a sellout. And like, uh, that how dare we make fun of these 
this story two months ago and then publish it like nobody told us. So they're basically ta- saying, I told you so, but the thing that doesn't exist with no evidence besides this crappy video you saw, which is easily debunked, you looked into it at all. And then basically have a problem with problem with me for not having like a shitty conspiracy page and scene. So you gotta go, you gotta go further into the tinfoil hat, uh, you know, realm, I guess, to, to appease these people. But who knows, man? I, 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 I don't know who to trust anymore, man. I really don't. I wish, I wish it weren't so difficult, but here we are. I don't think a lot of these people know what my group of friends is like, if they think like, calling me a sellout is <laughs> like the someone at work yesterday said I was talking to cameraman Lincoln who was supposed to get me a diet Coke from uh, McDonald's didn't. And then he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, unbelievable. How, how dare you? Blah, blah, blah. And then one of the girls goes, uh, Andrew, how can you be so mean to him? I'm like, this is how men talk to each other. Like you don't want to hear what happens when you're not around because it's way worse than that. Well, uh, and obviously somebody calling you a sellout or I, I get some, I get some pretty nasty messages from people that I used to consider friends, but obviously that's not going to stop it. Right. Like, I mean, you like really, like you think, Oh, well, man, you were just so mean to me. I better just stop what I'm doing drop everything and, and capitulate to your <laughs> your desires like that it, it only it only works the other way right it only like it's the same thing with the media they keep beating you senseless and you're like mm, i don't know this doesn't smell right the so people be like are mean to you just like no actually i'm gonna double down right like who really is like oh oh i'm so sorry i better better stop and just what what should i say next time what, what, what do you think like come on guys it's it's a mess dude but like i said here we are this is i, I guess um I guess I should be thankful that these are fairly historic times. And if nothing else, it's a lot to talk about. I think I was, I was kind of making fun of, not making fun of people, but like making the point that this whole virus thing is everybody's playing it to their advantage. Like even at work, right. In the real estate sector, like people are, di- di- um, you know, ditching their leases and saying, well, well, because of COVID, I don't have this and I'm not going to do this. Even I did it. When I left my apartment in Brooklyn, I was like, ah, COVID, you know, gotta go. Sorry. But everybody's using it to their advantage and I will too. Another shameless plug for my book soon, but you know, it's just, right. It is right. It is, man. Yep. Did Let's talk about that before we go. Do you have a copy now? I have like a draft. I have like an early draft. Hang on. If it doesn't look like, t- like garbage, show it on screen. <laughs> no, it's just, a, it's just an early draft. It's an early draft. I posted a couple to my, uh, I saw the um, pictures online. Yeah. Nice. So this is- <laughs> I said, yeah. I said a gar- uh, a picture of garbage bags is worth a thousand words or something, or a picture <laughs> is worth a thousand garbage bags because that's a hilarious. Worth a thousand garbage bags, <laughs> and, and I mean, loads of garbage bags, loads of stuff. Again, nice. that's the first draft. That's the back cover. So I tried to make it like so that it would end on a high note. So it's like mostly garbage and bums and needles, and then it's like, oh well, New York. If you if you're not actually on the ground there. And you're like in a high rise or in an airplane. It's actually pretty beautiful. But again, just an early draft. Um, so we're still looking at like a spring release date. So stay tuned for that. Well, yeah. Once you get the finalized copy, I want to know the meaning behind all of it. But we yeah, won't waste I'll, that now. I'll write like a short, uh, a short preface and a, a little bit of explanation because I wanted, I do want it to be mostly pictures, and you can really draw your own conclusion, right? Like it's. It's there for, for you to take, but there'll be a little bit of a preface explaining it a little bit. Um, and then the rest is just all, I mean, it's, it's great at its best, right? These are not, you know, DSLR, Canon, Nikon photos. These are me on the ground with an iPhone showing you what the ground looks like in New York. And right now is whatever today, mid-December, unfortunately, I don't think it's gotten any better. So I have this phone wall. I'm like, oh my God, New York is going to get cleaned up tomorrow. And and I'm going to miss it, and I wish I would have been there, and all the opportunities are going to come just just roaring back. But I don't think that's the case. Eric, there's not all the superheroes I thought there were going to be in this. Yeah. I mean, where, where is, where's Batman? Sp- Batman, Spider-Man, Ninja Turtles. You could argue Superman is from the same place, even though it's Metropolis. How are Metropolis? First of all, 
Ohio or Batman and Superman in the same city. Metropolis is right next to Gotham City. These two gigantic cities. I don't believe it. Maybe it's Jersey. I don't know. Maybe. Of course, we also have uh, uh, Seinfeld, obviously, just the goat show of all of them. And then, you know, people also watch Friends. That's not for me, but, you know, that's, that's another big... You know what? I should have gone down to the Friends facade because I do have the, the Seinfeld, uh, you know, the exterior of Seinfeld mm. in here. I should have gone down to Friends, but Friends is not my favorite, so whatever. I'm never... I don't... I don't know if I'll ever go back to New York. I got to I gotta get the jab. I got to get the row row jab. I got to get the Rona jab before they let me back in. So <laughs> I, might, I might never make it. Until Jay-Z comes out with like a coronavirus vaccine song. It's your boy. We're back with the vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> your boy. You, you heard about his, uh, his, his little publishing company that he's working on now? With, uh, yes. I, I saw I that as well. That. You must be I, I, a social I, justice warrior to print here. Exactly. Oh man, this is gonna get well. Lucky for us, most of those people can't read anyway, so we shall see. How <laughs> That's <it>. racist. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> another one censored. You know. All right, I think we're out of time here. Unfortunately, uh, next All time right, we'll. Tr- like in the background, I'm gonna try to get some sort of. It's easier to film this way, everybody. I'm sorry. I'll try to get it zoomed in more. In some way. Maybe I'll just bring it closer. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, we're still working out the kinks. What are we on? Episode four? So, you know, we're working on it. We're working on it. By episode 420, we'll be smoking blunts with a great set. (laughs) Perfect. I'm here for that. Let's do it. (laughs) All right. Take it easy, man. All right, man. Later.